I ask you to remove the lost souls today. Those who are lost and don't know their way. Who have no hope. Lord, I ask that you remember them. Lord, I ask that you bring them into a right relationship with you. Lord, I ask that you fill them up where they are torn down. Lord, somebody's hurting today and they have lost their way. But God, I know that you are faithful, God. reaction you think who this crazy lady um, but I guess she's trying to get the word out you know about God and saving herself for pensing and things like that um, I really can't judge her I mean I don't know you know I don't know what she's going through or what she's been through Holy. come on let's worship come on and lift your voice she is loud and she don't have to be screaming that loud <laughs> I mean that's just being real I call you Roger your name is righteous, righteous you are, and righteous you will be, yeah, 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 oh come on, let's call on the most high God, yeah. Some people might think she's crazy, and others maybe think that she's uh, insane, but me, I just, whenever I see her, I just, hey, you know, she's doing her job. might be crazy for the Lord, and this is the way she's trying to put the word out there. I mean, you never know, it might get her into heaven. I don't know. Yeah! I am Evangelist Mary James, part of the Love Outreach Ministries. Some days I walk maybe for about two, two hours and a half walking and ministering on the streets and talking to people about the Lord. Hey, Father, how you doing? How you doing this morning? Have you invited Jesus into your heart yet? Oh, yes. All right, that's a great thing. God bless you. You have a blessed day now. Hallelujah. It's no time to get tired. We're going to give God glory. I don't care much for it. Who's listening? I'm going to tell somebody. He's still healing. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah! I haven't listened to what she has to say. I think I tend to judge that on my own through my own reading of scriptures and that sort of stuff. It should not be out on the streets because some people just don't believe in that, and you have to respect that. I mean, I believe in God, yes, but everybody else doesn't. There's a reason for church, and there's a house. You can do that with your kids or something. Leave it at home. You got to come in through Jesus Christ. True and living God. So many people are driving by and they have their windows closed and they don't hear it and not many people are walking by. So you think it's ineffective? Yes. Because people are going about their business. Nobody have time to listen. God bless! I just don't know how she, you know, holds up to come here and not know whether she's doing any good or not. Hallelujah! What a God! What a God! What I just wanted to see what was going on. That's all right, darling. Let me ask you this. Are you saved? 
are, are you ready to receive the Lord into your life? I encounter different people who are going through different things, need prayer for different situations, and I just uh, position myself in place so that I can be used by the Lord to uh, minister to those people. Because the Lord loves you, and you know you have to actually go through um, inviting Him into your life according to Romans 10:9. And so, you know, it's, it's just as simple as saying, Lord, come into my heart and save me. I've been knowing Mary over 25 years from the same church, the church she was uh, called to the ministry in. It's a great need. Um, it's missions, and uh, uh, we hear missionaries going up, up away from our country to reach lost souls when what she's doing is the missionary right here in, in our country where it's needed. Forgive me for my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. It's just that simple. Welcome to the family of God. I love you. God bless you and the Lord loves you. I think it's um, a wonderful thing. You know, it's supposed to spread God's word and word of mouth is the fastest way to get it around. Everybody else tells their Freedom opinion. Freedom of speech is Mine's what I really, well. yeah. Freedom yeah. of speech. And it's all Preach about said. God is. Great. Yeah. Any way to get someone to, you know, get saved and walk the right way is ideal to me. Thought she was crazy at first, <laughs> but you know, she, she seems to know what she's talking about sometimes. People need to listen to what she has to say. say. What she's saying is true. And Jesus yeah. is coming back. People need to be ready for that. I was born in Augusta, Georgia. Uh, raised up in a small town uh, about 30 miles out from Augusta called Thompson, Georgia. My mom left me with my grandparents and um, I went through a lot of pain there, being beat and burned and different things that happened to me. I grew up as a teenager very angry and bitter because of all the pain that I had endured when I came to accept the Lord into my heart, I was working at Burger King and um, I lost my job there. I was 22 years old and um, I went to uh, the bakery that was right behind Burger King and I got hired. So it was a young man, on, a young white boy actually um, that he, he would come to me and tell me about Jesus, and I didn't really want to hear about Jesus. And he would always, he would just keep coming, and he would keep telling me, Jesus loves you. And you got to remember, because I came from so much pain and hurt, is that I, I didn't feel like nobody loved, loved me. I just felt like I was left, I was in the world all by myself. But uh, this young man, he would not give up. On break, here he comes. One day, on a Friday evening, uh, we was getting off from work, and he said to me, he said, Mary, what would you do if Jesus came right now? And it, it just hit me so hard, just right here, just hit me so hard, and it scared me because I did believe in heaven and hell, and I knew if Jesus came right then, I was going to hell because I had not accepted him into my heart. And I got down on the floor in my living room at three o'clock in the evening, and I invited the Lord to come into my heart. And I went back to work and I told Donnie, I said, Donnie, I said, I invited Jesus into my heart. And so Donnie took me to church with him. I don't know what the preacher said to this day, but I remember the altar call. Uh, Donnie said, Donnie nudged me. He said, go up. And I went up and I stood there at the altar and tears just began to flow. And it was, it seemed like I was being washed. And, and like all the pain and the hurt was just being washed off of me. And I just cried right there. And God had made a difference in my life. And I thank God for making the difference. And that's my testimony. And that's why I, when I felt the spirit of God move upon my life and change my life and, and change my heart and took the bitterness and the hatred out of my heart. I knew that this God is real. And now I must go and tell somebody that that same God that cleansed me and washed me 
and made me whole is able to make you whole too. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you, God. Hallelujah. Y'all keep doing what y'all doing. <laughs> when she first started doing, I was kind of like wondering, like, what's the purpose of, you know what I'm saying? Because she was dedicated, like, every day, he went bad, was to be out. I was like, Mom, come on now, that's, you know what I'm saying, ridiculous. But she said that's her job, and she chose it. That was God called her for it. I was married once. Um, I have two wonderful sons as a result. My marriage uh, did not work out. I ended up pretty much raising my sons. Um, as a single mom, they both have given their lives to the Lord. I thank God that they both support this ministry. I always have said, I'm thankful to have a mother that, you know what I'm saying, let me know about these things. She's just trying to stretch the message out to the, to the streets and do what she can to reach the message over to the people who maybe don't know. It will not matter where you work, or what you drew, or what your title was. That's good for this side. It does not work on the other side. On the other side, you got to have Jesus. Ain't no VIP sessions over there, baby. Ain't nobody parking cars and hanging up first. It's cool. I mean, to get the Lord's word out, I'm, um, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's okay. I think it's just passing the word of God around. I think she's great. She, you know, and she, as a matter of fact, she's faithful because she's there every day. Through the rain, the cold, the snow, the tornado. Out in the heat, the cold, constantly. It's just amazing. That's probably why we ain't getting tornadoes through here because she was out there preaching every day. She's, she's faithful to being out there. Every time I pass by the corner, she's out there. Years. Like years. Like years. I see her out here. Same, same place right here. It's crazy. I have been in Riverdale going on uh, five years now uh, doing the street ministry. I wasn't familiar with this area. Uh, but I just, I, I was just walking and praising the Lord, which is something that I had been doing already, just walking and praising the Lord. That was a part of the ministry uh, on the street. And when I got up here, I just stood there and I was praising the Lord. And, and uh, this is where um, I felt that the Lord was leading me to be. Come on and lift your voice so the world can hear you. So Riverdale, Georgia. She is part of the fixtures of our city. You know, since I've been Mayor Riverdale and with the excellent team that we work here in the city with, I feel she's prayed and kept us covered. So until even through the reception, recession, um, we had a balanced budget, a nominal surplus, economic growth, didn't lay anybody off, and didn't raise our taxes. So prayer is a very prominent thing. The ministry that I'm doing is, is actually a church. However, I, I have like other churches that I go through, go to, to make sure that I get the word and I'm strengthened. Certainly, you know, when people see somebody preaching on the side of the street, the first thing they think, well, is this person crazy? Have they lost their mind? What are they saying? What are they doing? But, um, Mary is a very uh, free-spirited person, and she liked preaching the gospel. I enjoyed her uh, when she was with Christian Word Outreach the whole year that she was there. And, um, and I got her to speak a couple of times at the church. Uh, but her place is on Highway 85. Hundreds of cars pass by every day and toot the horn and let Mary know, I'm with you, I see you, and, and continue the good work. We have prayer and praise on the street, and we have people come out, and they, they can either come, walk up to us, and we'll pray for them right here, or they can write down their prayer request and put it in the prayer request box. We are, we are not out here to hold out pants or anything to collect any money or anything like that. We want to uh, help people as much as possible because that's what the Lord will have us to do. And then we, we pray for the individual needs. Yes. 
we meet on Fridays at four o'clock. We go into uh, the library where we train. I met them through the street ministry, during the street ministry. Uh, God is put in my heart to, to uh, pull the body of Christ together for outreach training and is, is, is so that we can, we can get the word and be strengthened in, and we can take the word beyond the four walls of the church. We have a duty and a responsibility to make a difference in our cities, in our states, in our nation, in our world. One day she was walking, coming to Bible class over here. So the, I kept hearing the Holy Spirit say, pull over, give her a ride. H had first asked her wherever she's going, I give her a ride. She stayed here to the library. So I said, oh, okay, what you do over there? She told me she do ministry classes. Well, I just wasn't going to drop her off and leave. She was like, well, thank you. I said, oh, no, I'm going to stay. So it been a great impact in my life because now I get the chance to put my dance ministry out there and with the work of the Lord and just, just being able to witness and save soul as well. From time to time, um, churches will uh, ask me to come and speak. I know y'all thought I was just at Bethsaida at Highway 85. I might be anywhere. I might show up anywhere with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That devil can't stop me just at one place. Hallelujah. So many people ask me, well, how do you make it? I mean, do you work? Uh, how do you make it? And then I tell them I'm called to a full-time ministry. Well, she should take up a collection plate or something. She out here in this hot sun. Sometimes I've been out here and people didn't even know that I didn't know where I was going to sleep that night when I left the streets. I had no idea where I was going to lay my head, but God knew. And he sent people who, who are used by God to be a blessing to me. I saw you said you need any lunch. Well, I haven't gotten anything just yet. They, they buy, me, buy me water. They, they make sure I eat. Uh, you know, sometimes they'll come and say, I, I paid for your food over at the restaurant. All you got to do is go over there and, and eat. My buddy. God bless Mary. you, darling. Good yes. to see you. Good to see Amen, you. Baby. I've been doing fine. Amen. Keep up the good work. Thank you for your encouragement. I just thank God for those who he, touch, he touches their hearts to, to be a blessing to me while I do his work. She's a nice lady. She's into Jesus, and uh, she's always her. out here on the corner. Uh, we always seen her doing she's this. She's a blessing. She helps people out when they're in need. Give us a prayer. And, and it says prayers with us on the street out here. Uh, keeps the devil out. away from us. I don't have my own place, and I don't try to figure out where I'm going to sleep, where I'm going to lay my head, where I'm going to eat, what clothes. I don't try to figure none of that. I left that in God's hand, and God has made sure that my head hit a pill. And it's an honor and a privilege to do the work of God. I look at Mary as a very bold soldier, standing out on the streets, proclaiming the gospel, and uh, that's Mary's church out there. I hope she stays on that corner as long as she wants, because we love Miss Mary, and we don't call her Miss Mary or Miss Jane. She's the preacher lady. As long as God keep me out here, and, and when I get to be a little old lady, like 200 years old, I have more people trained to come to the streets and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's going to continue to go on. It's never going to stop because somebody needs to know that he is a healer and a deliverer and there is nothing too hard for him. <laughs>